Hi there, I'm Nate Haug, and I'm going to be giving you a preview of the layout module for Backdrop CMS. Uh, here we have a basic installation of Backdrop CMS out of the box um, with the standard Bartik like layout um, from Drupal 7. Um, it's responsive, so as you can resize the page, of course, um, the blocks and such all rearranged to make it so that um, they display correctly. Um, what's interesting about this site that differentiates it from other Drupal sites is that we have multiple layouts. So some pages, like this node page, has a different layout than the home page. And although you could do this with the block system by showing certain blocks on certain pages, uh, the layout system allows us to have entirely different blocks or entirely different layouts um, based on any particular path or condition on the site. So here you can see we've got uh, different blocks in the right hand side bar than we have uh, on the rest of the site, especially like this who's online block has been moved from the left to the right. Um, the way this is done right now is uh, through the layout system. Uh, the layout module is now controlling all pages on the site, including even the administrative layout. So the administrative layout is using a single column uh, configuration as opposed to the rest of the site, which is using this default layout which as you can see is using the 334 stacked, which is the kind of legacy layout from Bartik. So here's how this page is constructed. You can see all of the different regions. Uh, if I wanted to manipulate the default layout, I could easily do that by just dragging something from one column to the other um, and then saving that. And now that has affected all pages on the site um, that do not have a very specific layout that overrides that particular path. So let's take a look at the list of layouts again. Uh, and you can see here that we have these default layouts uh, that are for the front end uh, and for the back end. But then we also have um, a set of layouts right now, actually just one uh, for a particular path. And this is currently for the node slash percent path. So this may come out of the box if you upgrade your site from Drupal 7. It will automatically generate this layout for you because you will likely need it. Um, but on many sites out of the box, you may need to actually add this layout itself, which we'll go over in a second. So this is that node layout that we just saw. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could do things like I could configure this uh, who's online block. And under conditions, I could make this block shown only on certain node types, for example. And what this is doing right now is that uh, it's automatically figuring out the contexts that we have available. Um, and I can say that, uh, you know, for this particular path, we have a node context available, so this condition is available. But if I were to look at the default layout and look at one of these blocks, um, you can see that if I tried to add this condition, the same condition from the other one, um, there's no node context available here because there's no node from the URL. So therefore, we cannot select that node context. Uh, right now, this functionality uh, really only applies to conditions, but we have it within our ability and already uh, are using it in, in a few places, but none that's really very visible. Um, where we could make it so that certain blocks are only available based on certain contexts, which of course would make it so that we could do things like position individual fields from a node into different locations on the page. So right now we have this single layout uh, for node slash percent, which basically affects all nodes on, this, on the entire site. But a lot of times you'd want to have multiple node types and have each node type have an entirely different page layout. So if we wanted to create a new layout that was specifically for articles, then we could make a new layout, um, choose which layout we actually wanted, and then we specify node slash percent again, um, just like the existing path. And you can see that it automatically figures out um, the contexts that are available based on the path that was typed in. So you can see that it's going to provide a node context for us. Uh, down here in under conditions, we can simply say we want to add that node type condition again and say this is for articles and then create the layout. And so what this does, uh, it drops you into the 
the main configuration for uh, this layout itself. And the syndicate block isn't a good example, but let's add um, something like the search form, sure, um, to the right hand sidebar. And this is specifically for articles. And now you can see we have under the list of layouts, uh, we have a layout specifically for the note article, and then we have the default layout right here. If you did this with multiple different content types um, or multiple different conditions, like you could have a different layout per role or a different la layout per language, um, you can reorder the list of layouts that are at one particular path, and then the first layout that matches will be the layout that is used for that particular content type. So going back here to uh, the home page, here's an article piece of content. You can see the blocks that I've configured specifically for the article content type are now showing up in the right hand sidebar. All right, that does it for paths that come out of the box. Uh, but what about uh, paths that don't? We can make up uh, a layout for any path on the entire site um, just by knowing its URL. So let's say I wanted to make a user profile layout. I could do that uh, really easily by uh, creating a new layout, choosing the actual layout itself, and then type uh, the URL to that particular layout. And again, uh, if possible, layout module will automatically try to determine uh, what context that is based on the typed path. If you were doing a more complicated path, like uh, let's say you were looking at a node that was created by a particular author, you could add multiple wildcards uh, or paths. And then uh, if that path is unknown by layout module, then you can choose or tell layout module what that additional argument is. And it will automatically provide additional contexts for you when you're actually laying out uh, that particular path. So for now, I'm just going to leave this as user slash percent to override the normal user profile page. We don't need any conditions on the layout itself. And all of the blocks are copied from the default layout into this new layout. And I can do things like add a particular block for this, uh, for this particular user. So I can do something like add um, the user menu, for example. And then under conditions, um, as usual, I can do things like I can um, select a particular thing based on the user. Um, you'll see here that when I add this, um, there are multiple user contexts available. Generally, the user context is always going to be available in all layouts because you can always do a condition based on the current user. But in this case, because I have two user contexts available, uh, the current user who is looking at the page, and then also the user from the path, which is like going to be the, the user's profile who's, who we're looking at, um, then I can choose which user it is that I actually want um, to see this particular block. And there you go, and now we've got a couple of blocks over here in the right hand sidebar. And now at the list of layouts, you can see we've made a new layout um, for user slash percent. And I can go to that particular page if I so chose. And here you go, here's the custom block, here's the user menu um, that is different from the layout before, which would have been the default layout, uh, which is this one that we're seeing here on the home page. Uh, let's take it a little bit of a, a tour underneath the hood here and see exactly what's going on uh, with layout module. If we look at the root uh, of a backdrop installation, uh, we can go into the core modules uh, layout directory. And we can see the list of layouts that is provided by layout module out of the box currently. Uh, ultimately, these layouts likely will be moved to their own top level uh, types of, of uh, data, basically like uh, similar to how a theme or a module is a top level item in Backdrop, we're going to make it so that layouts also become uh, a top level item with their own .info file um, so that people can easily create those um, without really needing to dive into to building a custom module. If we look at the template uh, for a layout here, you can see that uh, this looks very similar to the page template 
that you would see on a Drupal 7 site. Um, this layout actually is exactly copied um, out of Bartik. What used to be the Bartik layout is now actually just its own standalone layout. There's a little bit of differences, things like um, the header and logo, um, site name, slogan, and header menu are all consolidated into an individual block. So something like uh, this header block right here uh, contains the site name, the logo, and the site menu. And that makes it so that if I wanted to, I could configure this block uh, or even remove it on a particular page. Like let's say I just don't want the site name on a particular page. I can modify that block on this individual page and now the site name is no longer shown. That was actually the default layout, so now the site name is hidden on most pages, but not all of them. Like this article will still have the site name shown there. Uh, this makes it so we can do things like uh, assemble Chromeless pages really easily. If I just wanted to remove these blocks entirely, then you can get a page like this that has no header whatsoever, uh, enabling you to do like one off landing or marketing pages really easily where the layout is specific to that one particular page on the site. Um, and you can easily get rid of things like um, any unnecessarily headers, headers and footers and things like that. So going back uh, into our code, um, this layout here is generally where all of the page content is assembled. Um, this also means that in general, you won't need to have a page template at all. Uh, if we look at the page template as it is right now, there is no longer a page template included with Bartik or uh, Stark or any other themes. But if we look at the page template uh, in system module, we can see that it's really simple now and that it really is just the, the HTML tag, the head tag, um, and then the body tag, and then page top uh, page and the page bottom. In general, the only thing that actually contains anything is going to be this page variable. Page top and page bottom are purely utilities for things like um, admin menu, for example, to add itself to the page. It's not for adding content, it's just for um, utility purposes of adding um, scripts and things like that to a particular part of the page. So what this means that uh, if themes no longer have layouts and layouts can be individually created um, separate from themes is that means that we can easily at any time switch our theme without any danger to our site. Um, currently in Drupal 7 when you rearrange your site or, or when you switch to a different theme all of your block positioning is lost unless the new theme has the same regions as the old theme. Um, that can be really problematic if you're going through a lot of different uh, a lot of different themes to just see how they work. Um, the block positioning is going to get lost and reset pretty much every different theme that you try. Uh, additionally, it's a big problem if you're going to be doing a reskinning of your site. The layout of your site is tied to the, the skin or the appearance. So what we can do with, uh, with this by, by decoupling these, you can see like the home page here uh, is in Bartik. Um, but what I can do is I can enable the Stark theme and set it to be the default. And now if I go to the home page um, and the entire rest of the site, you can see that the entire site is now displayed in the Stark theme. However, it still has layouts, um, responsive layouts that are provided by the layout module. So this will make it so that we can switch between themes really easily while keeping the layouts and the overall structure of the site intact. Um, this also has a few other repercussions. Let's go ahead and set uh, Bartik back to the default theme. <clears throat> this also has a couple other repercussions, things like um, the block module. Since block module is now no longer responsible for the layout, um, its functionality is severely reduced and is now nothing but the custom block functionality. So I can add new custom blocks um, that I could reuse um, throughout my site. But for the most part, uh, there's not really uh, any reason why you would need to use block module whatsoever. It's really just a, a tool for making reusable blocks at this point uh, and has nothing to do with the actual overall uh, layout of your page. Uh, one more thing 
Um, we've talked about um, default layouts and overwriting existing user paths such as node slash percent and user slash percent. Um, but a nice, another nice thing about layout module is that you can create completely arbitrary paths if you have a particular landing page or such as the, the front page, for example, or a particular section page where you might have um, a number of, of views um, laid out on the page but no actual page content. Um, you can make it so that uh, you can make an entire uh, landing page on your site uh, and just make up that, that path entirely, a completely arbitrary path. And so this is going to pull in again all of the, the things that we saw from the default layout. Um, <clears throat> but then the path that I've created here is, is just completely arbitrary. So I can now just go to this photos page and you can see that this, this page is laid out. Um, there's no actual content here on this page yet, um, but I could drop in any blocks I wanted to. And this allows us to just create completely arbitrary paths um, right on the fly. Uh, on the back end again, if we look into Backdrop, um, Backdrop has fully ported um, a uh, configuration management system. So we can see that all of the configuration that we're creating here isn't being saved into the database, it's being saved into JSON files, which allows us to easily move this data back and forth or the, the, the layouts of the site back and forth between different environments. And you can see here's all of the individual pages that I've created um, with their different layouts. Uh, but we can also see that when I created this arbitrary path at slash photos, it also made um, a menu item. So that makes it so that we can position this one particular uh, item in the menu however we so choose. Um, if you look at the list of layouts, you can see that um, if a, a particular path it overrides a path, then there's no menu settings here. But for an arbitrary path such as this photos page, um, I can create things like a menu entry right on the fly and also set up access control levels at the menu layer, um, which allows us to do things like, you know, check if a user has access to this photos page um, before we even show it in the navigation. For paths that you override, um, Backdrop just lets the the module such as node module or user module run its normal access checks. Um, for path that we create just completely out of the blue, you have to specify or optionally specify any menu settings for that particular path. Um, just like a, a path that we're overriding, if we wanted to, we could create multiple layouts at the same path. It would dynamically um, support that and then choose the correct layout based on whichever one uh, matched its set of conditions first. Um, based on the order of, of layouts of the same path. So that's pretty much it um, for our whirlwind tour of layout module and all of the functionality it can provide. Uh, with the ability of having contexts and per block settings, it really opens up a whole new world for site builders out there, making it so that we can build really amazing, unique pages um, throughout the entire site using all different kinds of layouts, all different kinds of conditions, um, really leveraging the full power of panels from Drupal 7 uh, at the page level scope. Um, it's a really exciting enhancement. Um, currently, it is available um, only as part of uh, an issue. We're currently working on this in issue 86 uh, in the backdrop issue queue. Uh, if you read through this, you can find the, the sandbox where all of the work is, is being done. And we're hoping to have this uh, implemented into Backdrop Core within the next month, um, because right now we're we're fully uh, we fully implemented the basics of the system. There's just additional work to be done. Um, but other than uh, then getting some testing in and and getting this uh, making sure that we haven't introduced any regressions, um, this is really to, ready to go at this point. So we're really looking forward to having it uh, in Backdrop CMS version one. And if you would like to give it a shot, um, just hop into this issue and uh, tell us what you have to say. Thanks for watching.